Hello and welcome. I'm Nafe42, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create data sets and set up SMB shares in TrueNAS Scale. Okay, so it's been a while since I've had Faith came in the video, so this is back. Um, I'm just still trying to figure out where to put it, all this kind of stuff. So as I'm doing the videos in the next couple, well, as I'm doing the next couple of videos, it might be in a couple of the different weird places until I kind of figure out my medium again or whatever and make this work. So, but anyway, what I have here is my TrueNAS scale system. So this is, I have my big server, I have a little server, and I have my micro server. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the four drives out of my micro server, put them into my big server, so that instead of having 12 drives, which uses a lot of power, around about, uh, I think it was around about 13 watts per drive that's on at the time, which itself could amount to around about 150 watts uh, an hour, which is quite a bit of power when you really think about it, especially since I'm not using not even 20% of that space. So this will be four drives, four, four, four terabyte drives instead of 12 three terabyte drives, allowing me um, expandability if I wanted to. Um, I think I'm using at the moment about four terabytes of data in my documents and all this kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, what this does is allow me to shrink down and then if I need bigger drives, I can get bigger drives uh, themselves, um, copy this stuff over to them, and then expand that as I as I require. Uh, I don't think I'll need much more than what I would have with this, so we'll see how that goes. But what I've started off here is I've installed TrueNAS Scale fresh on this computer, on my micro server. Um, I have set up a pool call, uh, called Vault. So if you want to create a pool, you just click on Create Pool, name it Vault here, There'll be four disks here, or however many disks you have that you want to put into that pool. And then you click this button here, it sends them over to here, and then you can choose uh, how you want them to work. So down here, it says for me Stripe. Essentially, because I can't choose anything else right now, uh, there is no drives for me to choose from, but it would say down here like Z or Z2 um, <clears throat> on the ZFS stuff. It's good to use Z at least, because what that means is if one drive dies, you still have all of your data. It's one drive redundancy. If you have Z2, it means two drive redundancy, which means that if you lose two drives, you still have all your data. Very important to make sure you have some sort of redundancy in your in your system because you want to make sure that if you do lose a drive, which will probably happen at some point, that you don't lose all of your stuff or then have to kind of hope that the stuff that you don't know is or isn't there. Essentially, you know, you know what backing up is anyway, hopefully. So... Uh, I've done this for documents already, and then I thought, I th that's, that's the moment I thought to myself, oh, we could probably, I could probably do a video on this, and then it will help people as well doing this. So, I'm going to go here, add data set, and then we've got three more data sets that I want to do. So, we'll do archive, oh, I'm typing on the, <laughs> typing on the wrong computer, archive, um, and then down here, you want to go share type SMB, which means it's going to be a Samba share, or uh, there's another meaning for this as well, but I forget what it is. It'll say, please wait, it's doing the circle. Um, so, yep, there we go, now it's created. We've got archive here. Um, so now what we can do is we can go on here and go to view permissions, press the little pencil, and then it will say here the different users and permissions and stuff that we have. You wanna go over here, you go click that, go user. Oh no, that doesn't add one, does it? Oh, I didn't add it first. Um, okay, let's undo that. We go back. Let's try that. Let's try that again, shall we? It's okay to make mistakes. Click view permissions. Press the pencil. Click add item. There we go. Now we add a new item. You want to use that. You want to create your username. So not create your username, but use a username that you've set up on here already. If you haven't set one up already, which I'm realizing you may not have, go to credentials, local users. Okay. And then you want to go add in the top corner. Username, username, password, password. Um, Make sure that's checked at the bottom for Samba authentication. And <clears throat> I think that's it. That is uh, literally it. You can give yourself root if you want or wheel. I don't know if they use wheel or not, but yeah. Uh, other than that, you don't really need to do too much else. That's fine. So yeah, for this, you want to go on here. You want to go down here. You want to where it says modify, change that to full control because you want to have full control of this drive. Uh, you don't have to be the owner or owner group, but click save access control list. What this does is it sets up the ACL for your user. Uh, and then hopefully what that means is once you try to connect to that drive 
later on, it actually does kind of work. So you want to go to shares, and then in the top right corner, you want to go add, and then it will say, what do you want to do? You go, well, we've got mount, vault, archive, and it's got the ACL there as well. Click save, and that's that there. So now what you can do is you can go into, all right, uh -huh. let me just get rid of these. Du -du -du, du -du -du. I am back on Windows at the moment as well, as you can see, <laughs> um, which is fine. I've I have it's dual booting actually. It's uh, Windows and uh, Arch Linux, which is very good. That's a very nice system. There's one file missing from this, but I think that's probably okay. So <clears throat> on here, I've got mounted my old server. So I've got archive here. Um, yeah. So that's all the stuff in there that is in my archive. I try to keep it to a sort of to some sort of degree. Um, good or proper, but it doesn't always end up that way. So you want to go do do ten forty two forty two, and then you do the IP address of the other server, which you can see up here under the title is forty two forty two one two seven, another backslash, and then you can do archive, enter, and now I'm in there. So if you haven't already logged into this server in particular, it will ask you your username and credentials. Use the username that you set up just now under credentials and on TrueNAS, and then it should allow me to now copy and paste this over. So we'll see, I don't know if it will or not. No, I do, I do know that. It and we'll see if I have actually got this all correct so far, uh, because what it's gonna do is it will start copying that stuff over. Actually, I don't wanna do that because I wanna move this server downstairs first so that I can Focus on other stuff. So we'll do one folder at a time. We'll do one folder for now. ATM6, all the mods. Six, if anyone cares to look into what that is. It's a Minecraft server that I've had from a long time ago. And it's copying, which means that I have permission on this drive to at least write stuff to it. Uh, we can test delete permission by creating a folder and then deleting that folder. There we go. Now we have full permission, permission to this drive as you'd expect. So what else we can do, obviously, we'll do this another two times for the other two drives that I want to create. Uh, and you want to do it, you know, it needs to be under Vault, because Vault is the drives, uh, it is the data set. So you can also, in here, I mean, I've never done it before, you can set up quotas for people. Uh, if you if they're on your network and you want people to have a certain amount of space on your drives, you can set them up so that they have less or more space. Software, so we want to create one called Software, so we change that to SMB. You can go advanced and then if you want to do quotas, you've got this little bit here and you can say quota warning alerts, all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's even got ACL type here. So I guess maybe, maybe if you set the ACL type to inherit and you set up ACL on the actual drive itself, maybe it would inherit the permissions for SMB for NAIF 042 on there. But I don't actually know. I've not tried that. And I, I, I think doing it this way is better anyway because it means that you don't have every drive with that permission, just in case you don't want every drive to have that permission, you might not want that. Um, so uh, yeah, we've got, we've got archive documents, software, and what's my other drive? Media, right, media, create that drive. Now, obviously as well, there is encryption here. You can choose to compress it more. You can choose um, to encrypt it more as well. Um, and the really good thing about TrueNAS scale is that when it, um, so on here in memory, you'll probably see that the ZFS cache is quite large right now, which it is, it's using half of the space available. Now this drive, this computer only has um, eight gigabytes of space. It needs, uh, well, the server itself needs ECC memory. You don't have to have that for TrueNAS scale, but I think it is recommended to have ECC and or ECC registered, not and or, or ECC registered. Um, RAM for it to make sure that it is all good when it comes to this kind of thing uh, and that keeps the ZFS cache more stable most likely um, so it but it does have still a free amount of space on there and it isn't actually doing so bad in the in terms of heat and all this kind of stuff um, so the yeah the services I'm not going to set any services up on this one either because this is literally just to take all of my drive drive stuff in so these four bits here will be populated with the data from my other server because it's a like for like. If you see on, uh, where would it be? TNS. So this is my other server. This is my main server. So this has 64 gigabytes of RAM and it's using a lot of the ZF ZFS cache as well at the moment because it's trying to 
drive all this stuff across. Um, as you can see, I've used 18% of the space on this machine. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to import the pool from this micro server into the big server. So yeah, I use just under just shy of four terabytes of, of space. I've got 17 terabytes free, which is loads of space. Like if I need to expand in the future, I've got four, uh, 12 drives here that I can just throw in and get any kind of extra space that I require. Now there is other stuff in here. There's test drive, which is for virtualizers bits on here. But what I will do on the server that I'm moving to is actually um, set up Proxmox. So the server will be one server because at the moment I have two servers that are fully operational all the time in my house. That draws a lot of power. So what I do is I'm going to cut down to one server with four drives, which will instead of 12. So that's going to cut the power a lot anyway. It's got one CPU and I've got a spare CPU for that just in case um, I need extra power. If I do, I can put that CPU in and, you know, double the amount of processing power that I have. I've got four sticks of RAM in there at uh, 16 gigabytes each, which gives me 64 gigabytes of RAM. So that should also aid any download or whatever speed because obviously it goes into the ZFS cache instead of just, um, instead of getting wasted. Um, and obviously RAM is much faster than hard drives. It's essentially, it's kind of, it's even faster than NVMe drives to be fair. So, I mean, that's a good way of storing this kind of data. And I think you can also use like a ZFS cache on an NVMe drive. I don't have that set up. I don't, I don't know how to set that up just yet, but I might look into that in the future because then at least the, the data that you're transferring will be stored if your system has a sudden malfunction. Although I do have battery backup, so that's, that's good as well. Um, but that's enough rambling for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this one, most likely I didn't set up correctly anyway, but all I'll have to do is take the, all the 12 drives out of this one. Um, and you can do that just by clicking on here and then going, no, it's here. Oh, how do you remove them again? I've forgotten about that. There was a, there was a disconnect button. I'm pretty sure. Oh, maybe it's on this. Yeah, there we go. Export slash disconnect. So you can export these drives, which means that I'll have this as a 12 drive backup <laughs> that I can access at some point. Uh, that is, oh, where's the drives? I can get the list of drives and you can see. No, I can't. can I? Discs. Here we go. So this is SDA to SDL and then an M. Um, yeah, so this is the boot pool. This is 120 ter uh, gigabyte. Um, I think it's a SATA drive. A SATA... Oh, man. Um, M2. SATA M2, I think. But I can't remember off the top of my head what that one is. Um, I didn't actually fit that one in. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's a sand disk, this thing. So I think it is most likely a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here we go. It's this thing. It's a SATA M2. So I can always put that back in. Well, most likely I'll just use this again. Um, and I can use the SATA drive out of my HP as a mirror for it, or as the host for Proxmox. I use the one out of that for, for Proxmox host. I'll use this one to host um, TrueNest scale, and then all the drives will also be ported through uh, virtually because Proxmox is really good at that. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that is, I think that is all I want to talk about right now. Oh, the sun has just really come through. Oh my god. Uh, and yeah, I mean, in, in here you can see all smart test results and that kind of stuff as well. It's really cool. Uh, there's some really good stuff that you can do on here. I've got loads of different projects that I'm looking into on here. And I just haven't been speaking about it. I've just, you know, I've just been keeping it to myself and doing that where I should really kind of come out here and and share some of these experiences because I'm sure a lot of people are probably having some troubles with this kind of stuff. Uh, and it would be good to see that, you know, I could help someone out if they are having troubles with that. So that's the ATM6 done. And uh, yeah, as you can see, if we go properties on here, properties on here, oh, that's the full archive, isn't it? Properties on here, they should be 4.918 files. Yep, yeah, 1168. And the space is exactly the same, except for the size on disk, because one of them is very slightly compressed. <laughs> but that's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And uh, let me know in the comment section if you want me to go over any other part of TrueNest scale or if you're having trouble with it. And it'll be very good for me to know because then I can push videos in that certain direction and help people where they actually need help. Me.